Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In this Ruby snack, I'll be showing you how to use nested forms in your app. If you'd like to code along, you'll just need to have a Rails app created, RSpec installed and set up, and simple BDD installed and set up. I'm going to be using that in my spec today. You can check out these videos, the DevGems demo RSpec Rails, and the previous Ruby snack in which we installed and used simple BDD. Nested forms allow you to create a parent and child objects in the same form. This makes the user experience better by reducing the number of forms and takes advantage of active record associations. Nested forms come in handy when you have an app that has a lot of parent and child associations and the user might need to create these. You can check out the links down below for the Ruby on Rails guides, especially for building complex forms and just a reminder about association basics. Let's jump into what we'll be building today. So I've created a Starship spec and you'll see at the top here some simple BDD to let you know what I had in mind. So today we'll build a feature called Starship with Crew Members. So the scenario is that a visitor can create a Starship with Crew Members. So given that the visitor can view a new Starship form, when the visitor enters information for the Starship and Crew Members, then the visitor can see the Starship listing. Now, it's easy enough to change this to be a model that has to sign in. You just need to include the step where they sign in. Today, it's just a visitor. Anybody who wants can add a Starship. So now let's define the methods from the scenario. We'll define visitor can view new Starship form. We'll just go to that new form, the new path, and make sure it's working. So we'll say, hey, let's make sure it has the content new Starship. And then visitor enters information for Starship and crew members. They will enter the different parts of the form, the Starship info, and then the crew members info, and click that button to create the Starship. So now the visitor can see the Starship listing. So we'll expect the page to have the name of the Starship we entered, as well as the crew member name. So now we need to define the additional methods for the forms because forms tend to change and therefore let's separate those out, especially for debugging purposes, making those separate is a good idea. So first we'll just enter the Starship info, the USS Enterprise. Then we'll enter the crew members and we'll do three for this example and we'll include James T. Kirk, Spock, and Leonard McCoy. And this form will also have the ability to select what division they're in, either command, science, or engineering. Moving into the text editor where I already have the app open, I will go into spec features and make a new file, which I will call starship underscore spec dot rb and save that. And now I will include the spec that I wrote. Now we'll run the spec to see what our first steps will be. Opening up the terminal, I will paste in that command to run the Starship spec. And we see that it comes with a failure, which is good. Place to start, visit the new Starship path. So that's where we'll start. To make that new Starship path, I will go ahead and use the Rails G scaffold command to create Starship. I know I'm going to need a model and views and a controller and Scaffold does that for me. I don't use this for every time I make a model or a controller, but it makes sense in this case. Then we'll rake dme migrate to create the model. Back in our terminal, we'll run the Scaffold command and you'll see it creates a lot of stuff for us. Maybe we don't need everything, but it's definitely a time saver when you're creating such a model and views and controllers. Now I always like to go ahead and check out that migration file just to make sure I didn't mistype something. It's just a double check. It takes like five seconds. Now let's go ahead and rank DB migrate in order to create the model in the database. Now the new Starship path has been created so our error when running the spec will be resolved. But I'm going to go ahead and set up all of the nested form and then run the spec again. So the next step is to generate the crew member model. So we will just need a model for this one because we're going to be creating it within the form for Starship. So we just need to run Rails G model crew member. It'll have a name and a division. And importantly, it needs to have the Starship ID in order to be associated as a child object. And then of course, we'll rake db migrate. Over in our terminal, we will run that command to create the model. And of course, let's just check out that 
migration file just to make sure we created it. Okay. Yep, we have the name, division, starship ID. Everything looks good. So let's go ahead and run rake db migrate to create our model. And we're good. Next up, we'll edit the models to make them associated. So in the starship model, we will add has many crew members. And then this is the important part for nested forms. This line allows us to have one form for crew members inside of the form for Starship. So it accepts nested attributes for crew members. I've also added a line to prevent empty records from being created. So it will reject an empty record if it doesn't have a name and that field is blank. In the crew member model, we only need to add belongs to Starship. Here we are in our text editor, opening up app models and then starship and we'll add those three lines now we'll go over into crew member and we'll add the one line belongs to starship there next up is the form itself woohoo the important part about the nested form is that fields for line you'll have an f dot fields for the name of the child model do and then whatever your form is for us, we'll be using just the name and the division. I'll be using select in order to create a dropdown to have command, engineering, or science. Also note that I'm using crew members do and then CM instead of F again. It's important to use different letters to make it clear that these fields actually go to a different child model within the nested form. Let's put that in the app. In our text editor, we'll go to views, starship and the form and you'll see here the form for at starship for our model let's go down to make sure what that's in that section we'll put it just under the name of the starship and we'll put the fields for crew members in there and we have our nested form we've edited the model and the view so next up is the controller this is where we will tell the app to create those crew members first we need to edit the new method by adding three dot times and then at the starship crew members build so it will build three crew members that's what i've decided to do you can build as many crew members as you'd like and then remembering that we need to whitelist the attributes down in starship params method we need to add crew members attributes and then each attribute that's going to be in the form you'll notice that starship id is one of these attributes even though it wasn't explicitly put into the form that's the great part about the fields for for nested forms it will add the starship id as a hidden field in the form that needs to be whitelisted in order to be saved with the new object back in our text editor we'll go into controllers and then starship controller and add under new the line to build those crew members and make that pretty. Moving on down to the last method. We will add right in there just a comma, add it inside of those parentheses and make that pretty. Now is a great time to go ahead and run our spec again. We've done all that's needed for the nested form, so let's see where we are and we come up with a new error yay so now it's saying oh it can't find kirk oh that's because we haven't added crew members to the starship show view let's go ahead and add that now so let's just very quickly put in some crew members onto the view of starship we'll use a simple each command to list each of the crew member names in our text editor moving to that show view we're simply going to add it after the starship name and move that on over and save. Let's run that spec one last time and it comes up green. Yay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. 
And if you are not already on my mailing list, be sure to head over to rubythursday.com and sign up so you can get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. And hey, let me know what you would like covered in a future episode. You can always contact me at melissa at rubythursday.com. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.